Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. You've got a dull, rip-toothed dovetail saw that needs to be sharpened and you don't know how to do it. Stay with me. I'm going to walk you through the process that's easier than you think. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. I think it's fairly well known that we make and sell premium saws, dovetail saws in particular. And if there's one question that I get repeatedly is, how do I sharpen it? What do I do when it gets dull? And that, I get the impression that most woodworkers don't feel confident in being able to sharpen their own saw, when in fact it's actually one of the easiest hand tool skills to pick up. It requires very little equipment and it's actually quite easy to do. Now, dovetail saws, or western saws I should say, are made from what's called spring steel. And this is softer than the file, so you can relatively easily file and sharpen that tooth. Now, don't be confused with the kind of saws that you tend to buy in a big box store. They often have hardened teeth, and those are designed to be simply disposable when they're no longer cutting, not something you resharpen. Premium saws, on the other hand, you can get a lifetime or more out of the use because you can constantly sharpen, and it sometimes may even need to reshape the teeth. Speaking of which, that's not what we're going to do in this video. We are going to focus on sharpening premium saws, the process of taking an old saw and jointing it and reshaping and filing the teeth, that's for another video. Today we're just going to work on sharpening your premium saw. Of course, the, the follow-up to that question is, how do I know when to sharpen? In other words, how do you tell when it's dull? The interesting thing about a rip saw, particularly something small like a dovetail saw, is even a dull rip saw will still cut. You really need to pay attention when it's brand new, since we are talking about premium saws, and take note of how fast it cuts and how aggressively it cuts. One easy way of telling is, if you run your fingers across the teeth like that, when it's dull, they don't, it's not sticky, it doesn't bite into your fingers. This one actually is probably still about three quarters sharp, and I'd say that only because of my experience in doing this. But as far as how it cuts, as it dulls, it's obviously going to cut with less ease, it's going to require, it's not going to cut as rapidly, and that'll progress to the point where if you're doing this as a hobby, and you're cutting dovetails maybe a couple times a month, I would think that you could get somewhere between two to four years between sharpenings. Now, if you get fussy and you want to have it pristine all the time, then you may end up doing it a lot more often than that. But single biggest test, run your fingers across the teeth against the, against the, uh, the direction of cut. And if it really bites and grabs your fingers, then you know it's nice and sharp. And if it slides over there, hardly even grabbing it, then obviously it's dull and it is time to put a sharpening on those teeth. So most likely the first question to be addressed when it comes to sharpening your saw is the file. This is what does the job next to the vise. And that's been our problem that we've dealt with for the last several years, finding a good file. Now files that we use are triangular in shape and they're tapered, narrow at the front and get wider toward the back. Now there's three measurements that we're concerned with. One is going to be the length of the file from the tip to here. Another is going to be the width, how wide it is across here. And the third is going to be the cut. Is it, is it a double cut or a single cut? And most file companies have shipped their manufacturing offshore and that's done nothing to improve quality. Single biggest problem, I think, is the fact that there's nowhere near the demand today that there once was. And when I grew up, my father was a carpenter and the guys on the job would sharpen their own saws and everybody did that. So there were good files available. I don't think anybody does that today. Most, if they do have a hand saw, it's one of those uh, induction hardened teeth that when it's dull, you just toss it and buy another one. Well, we finally found uh, Grobe, which is a brand. They make, manufacture them in Italy. And what we really like about them is the fact that they have nice sharp corners. A lot of the ones you find, the corners are rounded and they end up producing more of a wave look on your teeth instead of a nice sharp tooth with a nice crisp gullet, gullet being the base in between the teeth. So these Grow Bay files that are now available, we actually have them on our site, are I think the best files that you can currently get. When it comes to the length, the most popular sizes for sharpening back saws 
are four inch, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And the measurement is from the tip right to the tang. So this is a three inch, this is a four inch, this is a six inch. Now when it comes to thickness, the nomenclature for this dimension is a little bit odd. Each length of file comes in five different thicknesses and they're listed, or I'm gonna list them in the order of decreasing width. So you start with regular, slim, extra slim, double extra slim, and needle. So when you're considering a particular length of saw file, the regular taper will have the widest face and the extra slim will have the narrowest. So for a given thickness, say slim, the longer the file, the longer file will have a wider face. So the last feature on the files is the cut. They come both single cut and double cut. It's easier to see on these flat files. The single cut, you can see diagonal lines going in one direction. And the double cut, you have diagonal lines going in both directions. And the double cuts will actually cut a little bit faster. Okay, and you want to make sure that you choose the right size file. So I've got a little model here. So if my saw is like sitting like this, this is how the model fits. So we would obviously be sawing in this direction. Now, what you want to do with each stroke, you're actually filing two surfaces at once. Your cutting edge consists of two surfaces. So in order to get this point sharp, you've got to run your file this way, which does this surface and that surface. And then when you do this one, you're doing the second half of this cutting surface and the first half of this cutting surface. When you set your file in that gullet, you want the file, this width, to be more than double the height of the tooth. If not, when you make that stroke, you're going to be wearing into this surface. So if you were to turn around and use this on another tooth, you would end up having a center section worn. If, that is, if this is more than double the width of that, then you'll end up getting twice as much use out of your file. So simple little rule to follow. Get the right size and you're good to go. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. Okay, next thing we need is a vise. Now, Tayfrid in his book on uh, joinery actually gives you plans for this. I did a little modification. I cut a recess out in here so that when I put my saw in, I can get the teeth supported from one end to the other. In other words, I would have had to take my handle off. And I, I actually did the other side so that I could use the tenon saw at the same time. Now you've got a piano hinge at the bottom, you've got a hardwood strip on both sides. So when you put this in the vise, you can have the support of the teeth right up next to them and then it doesn't vibrate on you when you're trying to file. I put cleats on there so when I drop it into the vise, it's automatically level. So then I'll just spread that Put the saw blade in, have it so that the teeth are sticking up above the same amount from one end to the other, and a little pressure with the vise, and they're securely held. Now I'm going to use a four inch needle file, and uh, for a quality file you want it to be straight, uh, you need the handle to be comfortable, so we use these screws on handles and then we wrap them or we cosmonize them. We wrap them like we do a hockey stick simply because it's so much easier we can actually get a grip. There's the same thing without it and it's sometimes a little bit smooth and a little bit too small to grab hold of. This just makes it that much better. Just before we start, I want to mention also how important it is that the file be nice and sharp. I'm going to show you an example of a sharp and a dull one, but I also want to show you a nice good file has very sharp corners or very pointed corners as opposed to being rounded over. And this is going to produce that nice neat gullet as opposed to a wave. Now this file has been used a lot and if you look carefully you can see on there you can see lines or shadows where that part of this of the file is starting to wear away and you're going to get eight maybe ten sharpenings per file before it's ruined and at that point it is of no value you may as well toss it. But eight to ten sharpenings on a saw that you're going to use and need to be sharpened every year two years you're going to get a lot of life out of it. Now you're going to know you're going to have to hold this a very specific way because you want to produce the same surface on each tooth. And you're also going to hear things talk, a couple of words. One is set and the other is jointing. Um, neither one are going to apply right now. I'll just quickly explain set. If you were to look down here with a microscope, you'd almost need, 
you'd notice that each tooth is bent. If the first one is bent to the right, the second one is bent to the left, and it goes that way all the way down. Simple reason is you have to produce a kerf or a groove in the wood that is slightly wider than the saw blade to prevent it from binding. Now, because the teeth are looking like this and they're spread out like that, as you file them, obviously that set is going to be reduced. Now, you probably get three, maybe four sharpenings before you have to redo the set. And since we're talking about the first go around on this, we'll leave that for another video. And the other issue I mentioned was jointing. Over multiple sharpenings, you may end up getting some teeth taller than the others. And you want to bring them back all to the same level. So to joint, you would go with a flat file and you'd go in there and you would file down the high teeth, bring them all to the same level, and then go and reshape the tooth. Again, that's something for another video. So what I'm going to do in preparation for this, I'm going to come in and take a Sharpie and I'm just going to paint and I'm going to use an old Sharpie because it'll essentially wreck it. But you can go through and you can paint all of the teeth. And the reason we do that is particularly on a dovetail saw where the teeth are so small, if you happen to stop and sometimes fatigue forces you to, you want to be able to know where you started or where you stopped so that you can start on the correct tooth and not double file one tooth, which would lead to the reason why we eventually end up having to joint our saw. We want that to be nice and even. Now, I'm not going to bother doing all the rest of this, but I would typically go all the way down. Now, on this dovetail saw, the cutting face of the tooth is plum or zero degrees. So I want to maintain that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my file this is about, I'm working this way actually. I'm take my file and I would set it in there like so. And I took a, I took a piece of wood, I cut a drill a hole in the middle and with this, with this file held so that that cutting face is standing plumb, I'm gonna stick that piece of wood on there so that it's level. Now when I, let's just verify that before we get started. Okay, now I can use that as a guide and all this is doing is just exaggerating the position of the file and I can tell if I'm tipping one way or the other. You'll eventually get to a point where you don't need that. You'll just know that I have my finger right here and I can kind of feel where that should be. And I would simply start on the first tooth and I'm going to go a little bit away from tradition on this. Because these are small teeth and my eyes aren't what they used to be, it's so small, if I were to try to file and lift and drop down to the next tooth, it's just way too much work. And the old guys will tell you that it wears out the file if you drag it backwards. Well, for the cost of a file, and instead of getting 10 sharpenings, now I'm only going to get six. I'm going to go with the convenience of filing, coming back, riding over that tooth and dropping into the next gullet and doing the same thing. And this keeps me from having to locate where I need to be on each after each pass. I'm actually going to start back here in the end. Now, I'm also doing a rip saw, so that means my file is going to be held, or I'm going to be filing perpendicular to the run of the blade. And that's pretty easy to judge. If not, you could possibly draw some lines on here. But I'm going to get in that first tooth. I've got my file so that the back side is standing plumb, and my, my little guide is level. And I'll go forward, come back. Depending on how bad the tooth is, you may need two strokes. This tooth is in pretty good shape, so I'm just going to do one. And then I'll just ride over that tooth and drop into the next gullet. Go forward and back, ride over and drop. Light to moderate pressure, doesn't require a lot. Now, on my, on my saw, I have little tiny teeth that help in the starting process. So as I get to them, I want them to be sharpened as well. I'm going to switch files. And the cutting face on these is not zero degrees. So I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to hold the saw so that the top is 
level. And I'll go in and just touch those lightly. And I do this mostly to keep the tops of these teeth in line with the tops of the main cutting teeth. If not, you end up with uh, quite a difference and it doesn't make for a very nice sign. Okay, that's it. Doesn't take that long. Now the test. When you run your fingers like this, you can feel how grabby it is and you can tell, okay, that saw is nice and sharp. Now final test, we'll take it out and actually try it on a piece of wood. That was probably all of a five minute procedure. Now, that standing plumb and see how it cuts. And one of the things you want to make sure is that your saw is cutting nice and straight. No drifting to the right or to the left. That would indicate an issue with the set. This is cutting laser straight, and a laser straight cut produces two flat surfaces, which means you're going to have a really good dovetail joint. Well, there you go. Don't be afraid. It's not hard. Get the gear you need, and get these as well. It really pays when you can see. Good luck. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.